What's up guys, Higgins is Ben here with another edition of the Friday video. The Friday video is the video that I make right here in my car on the way home from work on Friday. And uh, today, I um, wanted to get back into kind of what the Friday video was about, helping people become better teachers or at least throwing out some advice uh, for people that uh, want to be teachers or, or have questions about what it's like being a teacher in Japan. And uh, this is actually something that came up the other day when uh, I posted something on Twitter about the, uh, you know, this dude behind me needs to slow down. Hold on, and I can't see. Um, you know we're gonna get to the red light at the same time, genius. But anyways, um, uh, so yeah, I posted a thing on Twitter the other day about um, in my car in front of me. Uh, I posted a thing <laughs> uh, on Twitter the other day about some very poor English that I found in uh, a lesson plan. And it was kind of just an offhanded tweet of like, man, this is terrible. Um, good thing I'm not gonna, you know, teach this, you know, whatever it was. And uh, so, which led to a whole bunch of people like retweeting it and making jokes about it and and then actually I got a comment from somebody that said, well, like, what do you do in a situation like this? What do you actually do when you come across something that's either terribly written or poorly explained in a textbook? Um, and uh, I thought that was a good question. And if you um, are going to be a teacher in Japan or you're a teacher really anywhere, this applies to you. Um, so... The city that I live in, we have pre-made lesson plans, like already lesson plans. So if you can read, um, you have a lesson plan, right? So if you can read what the lesson plan says to do, um, it doesn't take much effort um, if you want to do it that way. You know, if you want to put as little effort into your lessons as possible, um, just teach out of the book and, and don't do anything different, you know? Which, hey, that goes for, for any anybody, right? So anywhere that you're at that you're using a lesson plan or a pre-made lesson plan or, you know, a lot of the, even our books for junior high um, and even the newer books that we use for elementary school, goodness, that sun is bright. Um, they have pretty much the lesson plan broken down into the, in the teacher's manual for you. So again, if you can read what it says, uh, you know, for the activity, hey, you know how to do the activity. You don't have to, to do much uh, other than that. Um, but uh, the thing that I do, and um, I've, I've done this for years, and, and it's, you know, it's a very wise thing to do. Um, and it, But it does take some time to do. It does take uh, a little bit more effort, and it does take a little bit more um, actual physical classroom time as well. Um, and that's knowing what your students' level is and knowing where your students are at um, English-wise, uh, what they can what they can handle. Um, because nine times out of ten, I will take uh, those lesson plans that are already written, and I will basically just read what the topic is about, and then so if it's so say it was something simple for elementary school, a uh, simple phrase like, I like sports, or what sports do you like, um, just a simple phrase like that, um, then I will take that, and then I will think about each class, or think about uh, the classes as a whole, maybe. <laughs> um, but I will then design a lesson around that. So because I've been doing this for so long, um, I literally can take a topic like that and have a lesson plan written out um, in two to five minutes um, because I already know kind of what games I want to play or what, I'm sorry, what activities I want to do. Uh, I used to work for a certain company that um, would yell at us if we used the word games because English, they're not games, they're activities. And then as soon as I get to the classroom, the teacher's like, what game are we playing today? And I'm like, well, it's an it's activity. Um, but anyways... I digress. Uh, so yeah, so I can have a lesson written in two to five minutes because I've just been doing it so long. Um, I know 
you know, maybe I already have a worksheet written out for the lesson that I've used in other classes that I will just use the same worksheet for. Um, but uh, yeah, knowing your students and, and taking the topic lesson or the, the, the key phrase that you're going to be using for that lesson and then um, making a lesson around that based on what your students already know and what your students already uh, can handle um, is, is the best way to do that. Um, because then you're not teaching something that's below them, something that's too easy. Um, cause then they're not going to learn. It's just going to be like a repeat lesson that they've already done. We've already done this. I already know this. Um, so you want to kind of, uh, if you want a fancy college term, um, scaffolding, you know, like you have scaffolding on a building, it helps you reach the higher levels. So scaffolding, when you're teaching English, you always want to kind of teach at a level that's a slightly above what you're already teaching. So you're building up, you're building up your scaffolding to teach something they know, but then also throw in other things that they don't know, throw in other uh, things that they can learn. So that way they're maybe doing a little bit of a review for the lesson or they they already know some part of the lesson, but there's another chunk of the lesson that they don't know. Um, and so that's how you, one, keep them interested, and two, keep them learning because they're not just learning the same thing over and over again. Um, hello, Scooter Man. Um, and uh, then that way they're also, you know, learning something new and, and, and expanding their knowledge on what they already know. Um, so yeah, so that's usually what I will do for, um, for like an elementary school lesson. Cause those are the lessons that I usually prepare. Um, junior high lessons don't usually get prepared by me. I think over the, gosh, when did I start teaching junior high? It's been six, seven years. I think that I've taught maybe three junior high classes where the teacher has come to me and said, Hey, you're going to teach this page today. And I just go, uh, oh, what? Because 99% of Japanese lessons or uh, junior high lessons are in Japanese. So they're taught in Japanese. They're taught the, fra the uh, not the phrases, obviously, but they're taught the, the, the grammar points. They're taught the explanation for everything. They're taught all of that in Japanese. And then I'm there to help them with the pronunciation and the, you know, work um, that they're going to do in English. Uh, so, so yeah, I think maybe two or three times I've ever actually had to teach a junior high lesson where the teacher just was tired. <laughs> like she straight up came to me and just said, Hey, I'm tired. So can you go ahead and teach this grammar point? Or can you go ahead and teach this? I forget what it was. It was a couple years ago. So yeah, so that has happened. Um, it, it doesn't happen all that often. It, it usually shouldn't probably happen ever, but hey, I, you got to be flexible, right? <laughs> oh, goodness. We're going to squeeze in here. We're good. All right. Um, so, so yeah, so that's usually what I do. And, and that's, uh, it's a good reminder for you if you're going to be teaching to always kind of be teaching, no matter what your, whatever the lesson is, um, always try to, and I hate, I hate when people say like level up, um, but always try to teach like a level above what your students already know. Um, it's a good thing to do. They, the, the students want to, for the most part, <laughs> uh, want to learn something new. And so if they're in your class and uh, you're teaching the same, you're teaching at their level, right? Uh, over and over again, they're not really learning anything. So throw in some stuff that's a little bit more difficult for them. Maybe use different phrases or it's all about... Like I said earlier, it's something that takes time because, especially this year, because of all the craziness going on, but then the fact that I'm at a new school, and so I don't know any of the students. I don't know um, what the previous teacher taught them or didn't teach them. Um, I don't know any of that background, and so um, you kind of have to feel it out. And I was actually surprised this year that like my first and second grade elementary school classes um, have been some of my favorite classes to teach because one, those kids are super like ganky and super like they just want to they just want to 
some of them just want to goof off um, (laughs) because they're first and second grade. Um, But they they want to learn, and you can see that they still they still haven't gotten broken by the world yet, and they still have that like oh learning is fun. (laughs) They haven't been broken by the real world. Uh, Might not have. I don't know. I'll leave that in there. Um, But yeah, so it's fun to teach them because it's new, but also it was kind of weird at the beginning of the school year because I didn't know what they knew or what they didn't know and like what I could get away with teaching or what I could, you know, it, can I teach, you know, the same thing that I've taught other classes that I've taught for years because I know them. Um, and so, yeah, so that's going to take time. Um, and so, yeah, so if you come across, uh, things in a textbook that either are flat out wrong, like bad pronunciation or bad wording. I had, we had books last year that referred to Washington, D.C. as Washington, America. Um, and my thinking, my logic in all of this is if I were to take one of these students and put them in America, uh, whether it be in a certain situation, like at a grocery store or, um, you know, at a restaurant or just talking to someone trying to get directions, would the person that they're talking to, the native speaker, the native American speaker, be able to understand the things that they're asking? So when you come across things like Washington, America, you quickly say, no, no one in America refers to Washington, D.C. as Washington, America. Um, If anything, if you say Washington to somebody and don't say D.C., they're going to assume that you mean Washington State. It's the same thing that I get on people with when they translate mochi to rice cakes. No. Mochi is mochi, and a rice cake is a Quaker rice cake. And if you go to the grocery store and you ask somebody... <coughs> excuse me. Getting all worked up here. If you ask somebody, hey, where are the rice cakes? They're going to take you to the Quaker oats rice cake section okay so don't put comments in the comment section because i have chosen to die on this hill many times and i will not accept the word rice cake to be translated as mochi ever i that is my hill i have claimed it i'm dying on it i will die on that hill um Again, it's that whole, if I were to drop this kid in a supermarket in America and have them ask somebody for something at the supermarket, would they be able to figure that out and be able to do that? So, long story short, if you do come across things like that, um, don't just teach out of the book. Don't just teach um, out of the lesson plan. Uh, Focus your lessons on being geared towards your students and um you know if things need to be corrected correct them so i'm gonna go before i lose my mind because people in this area tend to not be able to drive very well and so um i would much rather not uh say things on camera that uh people don't need to hear so that being said, have a good one, guys. Oh, wait, there's a leave a comment section thing. Hey, comments. If you got questions or comments, leave them in the comment section below. Have a good one, guys. Peace.